everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Ivar the Boneless Ivar the Boneless was the legendary leader of one of the greatest armies the world has ever seen. He was born in 794 AD as the son of another legendary Viking, Ragnar Lodbrok. After his father was supposedly butchered at the hands of the Saxons, who threw Ragnar into a pit of snakes, Ivar vowed revenge. He then banded together the greatest army of Vikings in their history and invaded England. His plan, along with his two brothers, was to take over the entire country. And according to historical sources, he was a man who could strike fear in the hearts of even the bravest men. Historical accounts say Ivar the Boneless was violent, cruel, and the very definition of a barbarian. And yet everything we know about Ivar is a mystery. The biggest issue with his story is that it comes from Norse sagas where the truth is mixed with fantasy. We know Ivar was real because his great heathen army definitely invaded England, but the particulars of his life are shrouded in uncertainty. Ivar's story was detailed in the saga of Ivar Ragnarsson, which was written years after his death. But we don't really know what Ivar's nickname was. Although most people call him the Boneless, others have guessed the translation for his name may have been wrong. He may have truly been called Ivar the Detestable, which is somehow even worse. And still others suggest he suffered from osteogenesis imperfecta, a serious condition in which a person's bones are so brittle they break with the slightest force. He was probably so cruel and ruthless to counterbalance the fact that he was physically weaker. In the year 857 AD, Ivar allied himself with the son of a Norse king named Olaf the White, and together they raided monasteries in Ireland. But the Irish eventually developed coastal defenses to protect themselves from being attacked. And so, in 863, Ivar and his allies left Ireland and attacked England. They took York in 866, then went on to capture Nottingham two years later. And afterward, they invaded East Anglia between 868 and 869 AD. They were an unstoppable military force who not only raided England, but created settlements and embedded themselves there, becoming a part of the land. Many people in England today still have distant relations with the soldiers in Ivar's army. But the biggest mystery by far is that nobody knows where Ivar is buried. He died in 871 AD and supposedly wanted his body to be buried on the coast somewhere. Legend has it that in 873, the great heathen army traveled to Repton to bury their glorious leader. This was a popular place for burying kings at the time, including Ethelbald, king of Wessex, a century earlier. However, nobody has ever been able to find Ivar's grave. All we know is that he's buried somewhere in England, likely near the village of Repton. Number 9. The Fragmentarium Artificial intelligence has begun to make its way into ancient history. At the Institute for Assyriology at Ludwig Maximilian University, linguists created an AI bot to help decode fragments of Babylonian texts. The scientists behind the invention have named it the Fragmentarium. Since 2018, Professor Enrique Jimenez and his team have been digitizing every piece of cuneiform script from ancient Babylonia that's still in existence. In total, they have photographed and digitized about 22,000 fragments of text. With the rise of AI in 2023, the team was able to create a unique database of ancient tablets. The Fragmentarium is now functioning as an autonomous researcher. It can match old text fragments and piece together entire works of literature from the ancient world. This may sound like science fiction, but it's working as we speak. One of the AI bot's most recent discoveries is an entirely new version of the ancient literary work known as the Epic of Gilgamesh. It was written in 2100 BC and was the first real fairy tale and storybook. The epic follows the adventures of Gilgamesh, king of Uruk in Mesopotamia. And amazingly, the AI model was able to discover a significantly younger version of the story. In the future, AI will be a major tool in piecing together lost histories and mysteries from the past. Let's use AI for good, not evil. And now for number 8, 
But first, I want to give a big shout out to Geeky Hoodie and Shane and Smith. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 8. The Mysteries of Sandia Cave Sandia Cave, also called Sandia Man Cave, is an extremely ancient archaeological wonder in New Mexico. It's located near the town of Bernalillo inside the Cibola National Forest. The site itself was discovered nearly 100 years ago in the 1930s. The reason it's so mysterious is that it contains evidence of human occupation from at least 11,000 years ago. This humid, shallow, and somewhat creepy cave was declared a National Historic Landmark in the 1960s. It's currently accessible at the end of a trail off a state road. The cave is high up on the side of a cliff, nearly impossible to reach without a grappling hook. It has red dust all over the floor and ancient pieces of graffiti scribbled on the stone walls. But other than that, the whole place is empty. Sandia Cave was, for a brief time, full of scandal. Scientists once claimed this cavern held the earliest evidence for human habitation in North America. In 1934, Frank Hibben from the University of New Mexico excavated the small cave. He discovered artifacts from the Folsom culture, which was believed to be the earliest culture in the Americas. But Frank also discovered artifacts he thought came from a different group, a group of humans he named Sandia Man. Afterward, he began to make some outrageous accusations, claiming that this human group was living in the cave 25,000 years ago. Frank was a professor when his discoveries were published in an issue of Time magazine, and people hailed him as a revolutionary figure in the field of archaeology. However, Frank was incorrect. By the time the 1960s rolled around, scholars began having doubts about his ideas. But things reached a boiling point in 1995 when journalist Douglas Preston ousted Frank Hibben as a fraud. After that, other scientists began to point out inconsistencies in his samples. It eventually became obvious that Frank had gone so far as to plant his own artifacts in the cave. It was all so he could make up an entirely new civilization of humans. By the 2000s, Frank was disgraced and the Sandia Man was erased from the textbooks. Sandia Cave is still an amazing place, it just isn't as ancient as people thought. Number 7. The Tower of Babel A baked clay tablet from ancient Babylon is supposedly offering evidence that the biblical Tower of Babel was a real, physical construct. Regardless of what you may think about the Bible, if its stories are true or fantasy, it was still a book written over 2,500 years ago. As a book authored by a human being, it should be expected that at least some of the subject matter was based on reality, and this now appears to be the case with the Tower of Babel. In the book of Genesis, chapter 11, it said that at one point in time, the entire world spoke the same language, which made life a whole lot easier. So they gathered in ancient Babylonia and built a megalithic city. And since everyone spoke the same language, they were able to work in harmony and achieve great technological feats. The people in old Babylonia decided to build a tower so tall it could reach the heavens. But this angered God, who realized that people who spoke a single language could do anything together. God then destroyed their tower and scattered their language into fragments, forcing the people of the planet to speak in many tongues. The story is obviously fanciful, but what if it was based on a real tower that tried to pierce the heavens? Andrew George, a professor who specializes in Babylonia at the University of London, says the answer is a resounding yes. He believes in the existence of a mythical tower. Andrew recently analyzed a tablet that was discovered in Babylon about 100 years ago. The tablet has a picture on it of a massive tower and a great king standing before its stairs. Beneath the image of the construct is an inscription that reads Etemenanki Ziggurat Babel, which translates into English as Temple Tower of the City of Babylon. The Etemenanki was a real building, a tiered pyramid known as a ziggurat. These structures were built throughout Mesopotamia around the same time Egyptians were building their pyramids. 
Andrew George thinks the Etimananki was so big and so grand, it was the inspiration behind the story for the Tower of Babel. It may not have been as dramatic as the Bible makes it out to be, but the tower was likely a real structure, one that was so magnificent that we are still talking about it to this day. Number 6. The Poverty Point Culture the archaeological site of Poverty Point is steeped in mystery and emits thoughts of the unknown. It's a weird name, it makes it seem like everyone was poor or something, but don't let the name influence you. The earliest archaeological evidence found here suggests that the initial building phase began in the late Archaic period, sometime around 1800 BC. Building continued for about 600 years, with a massive ceremonial complex being established by a society of hunters and fishers. These days, scientists only know these people as the Poverty Point culture. They probably didn't call themselves that. They lived in patches of the lower Mississippi Valley and in tribes along the Gulf Coast. There have been over 100 sites attributed to these mysterious people throughout the region. But the truth behind their origin remains a mystery. Many anthropologists think they came to North America by crossing the Bering Strait land bridge between 12,000 and 15,000 years ago. The Poverty Point culture may have been the descendants of some of the original immigrants in North America, the very first Homo sapiens to step foot on the continent. Here's where things get a little shocking, though. Studies at Poverty Point have proven that the builders initially leveled the landscape. Just like how we bulldoze entire pieces of wilderness today to build our neighborhoods, so too did the Native Americans before us. They leveled this place to make a central plaza, then made huge earthen mounds surrounding it. The biggest of these dirt hills is Mound A, which stands an astounding 72 feet tall. However, some researchers call it the Bird Mound instead because of its bird-like shape. And it kind of sounds better. The purpose of Poverty Point is completely unknown. Some think it was a settlement, but others believe it was a trading hub. It could have been a place where people congregated from all across North America, trading regional goods at a grand market. It may have also been an astronomical site where ancient scientists studied the stars. The only other explanation is that it could have been used as a religious center. In truth, scientists don't have the slightest clue what this ancient site was used for, and they can't come up with an answer they all agree on. Number 5. Sinbad the Sailor Sinbad the Sailor is by far the most famous Middle Eastern hero from ancient literature. In the tales of Sinbad's voyages, he fights monsters, visits exotic lands, and contends with supernatural forces. But how much truth is there to the fables of Sinbad the Sailor? Was he truly a real person who sailed the Indian Ocean and followed trade routes to dangerous destinations? Sinbad comes from the Western translations of 1001 Nights, the great Middle Eastern collection of epic stories. These tales are set in Baghdad during the late 8th and early 9th centuries AD. Sinbad's story is told alongside even more famous legends like the one of Aladdin, which is also in 1001 Nights. But what's really strange is that in the Arabic translations of these same stories, Sinbad isn't anywhere to be seen. Historians don't know when he was added to 1001 Nights or why he was ignored in Arabic versions. Sinbad is a Persian name that means Lord of the Sindh River. This seems to suggest his origin is in Pakistan, though that doesn't tell us much about him. There are also some bizarre similarities between Sinbad's wild adventures and Odysseus's own journey in Homer's The Odyssey. Some have suggested Sinbad was a copy of Odysseus. However, others think Sinbad was entirely based on a Persian adventurer named Solomon the Merchant, who was a real adventurer that traveled from Persia to China in 775 BC. Do you think Sinbad was a real person? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're at it, be sure to subscribe! Number 4. A Lost Culture in Ireland Archaeologists in Northern Ireland have always known about the ruins from the Kingdom of Aliach, which are scattered across the banks of La Foyle. Past excavations have revealed artifacts, ruined structures, and evidence of the lost kingdom that thrived 2,000 years ago. 
but new evidence suggests that the area was occupied much earlier, over 5,800 years ago, by a mysterious Neolithic culture. The recent excavation has revealed the ruins of houses from 3,800 BC. This is the first real evidence of an unknown ancient culture thriving in Northern Ireland long before the Aliach. The dig took place in 2021, just outside the city of Londonderry. The only reason there was even a dig in the first place was that a new housing project had just been approved. When this kind of thing happens in most places in Europe, an archaeological survey is required before construction can begin. And this time, the survey found something exciting. On the very spot where the new housing development was to be done, archaeologists discovered the ruins of a destroyed housing project from the Neolithic days. Archaeologist Kay McGonagall said the team found the distinct outlines of two Neolithic homes. Each house was covered in a peaked roof, with their walls carved from rock and shaped with oak planks. Researchers have even found tools, cooking instruments, and fragments of pottery. Number 3. The Dead Scroll Treasure Map The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1947 by complete accident. A couple of sheep herders were throwing stones when one of them smashed a pottery vessel that was hidden in a cave. When the youngsters investigated, they found the very first piece of the Dead Sea Scrolls. In the years that followed, roughly 15,000 fragments were uncovered, composing over 800 religious documents. They were left in the dark caves of the Dead Sea 2,200 years ago by a mysterious Jewish sect known as the Essenes. These ancient Jews believed it was their duty to safeguard all religious knowledge while they waited for the birth of the Messiah. But we're not really here to talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls in general, but rather the Copper Scroll. In 1952, archaeologists found the Copper Scroll in Cave 3, hidden in a pottery jar and sitting on a shelf in the desert cave. The Copper Scroll is one of the most interesting artifacts found in the Dead Sea Caves because it's a treasure map. All the other fragments of text were written on either papyrus or leather, but the Copper Scroll, as its name indicates, was written on copper and tin. It's a complete anomaly, one that supposedly leads to unimaginable riches. Every single one of the Dead Sea Scrolls contains something to do with the Bible. These scrolls contain hymns, codes of conduct, prayers, and even religious ramblings. But the Copper Scroll is unique because it instead contains a list of 63 locations where gold and silver can be found. The real kicker is that after all these years, nobody has ever found a single one of these treasures, even though many people have searched for them. The issue is that nobody knows where exactly to look because the instructions are way too vague. For example, one of the treasures is said to be located in the ruins of Horeba in the Valley of Achor, under the steps heading eastward about 40 feet. But how in the world is anyone supposed to find that exact spot after over 2,000 years? The description goes on to say, Here lies a chest of silver which weighs 17 talents. The talent is an ancient measurement equal to about 75 pounds. 17 talents would equate to roughly $27 million in silver, which would be a fairly good haul if anyone can find it. Number 2. The Moon-Eyed People There is an ancient Cherokee legend which speaks of mysterious people with pale skin and poor eyesight. The Cherokee called these people Moon-Eyed and wrote stories about how they created some of the oldest structures in North America. But in modern times, nobody has ever been able to figure out who the moon-eyed people were, or just what in the world the Cherokee were talking about. The Cherokee had territory all throughout Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and even in Kentucky. This was in the 16th century, when Europeans arrived in North America and came into direct conflict with the Native Americans. The Cherokee were one of the five civilized tribes, with the other four being the Chickasaw, Choctaw, Creek, and Seminoles. They were called the Five Civilized Tribes because the invading, condescending Europeans viewed these particular tribes as more rational and easier to deal with than the others. 
Where the Cherokee came from has always been an intriguing mystery. Some anthropologists think they were new to southern Appalachia and migrated from somewhere else in North America. But let's get back to the myth of the moon-eyed people. They were a group of mysterious humans who lived in Appalachia until the Cherokee arrived. Then the Cherokee defeated them in combat and forced them off their own land. The Cherokee claimed these people had wildly different features than anyone they'd ever seen before. Their skin was white, they had a difficult time seeing in daylight, and they'd created ruins which dotted the hills of Appalachia. To this day, we don't know who the moon-eyed people were, and we have no clue why there are stories of them all the way down to Panama in Central America. Number 1. Da Vinci Secrets a new study has just identified the secret ingredients that were used by Leonardo da Vinci in his paintings. Not only da Vinci, but other old masters like Rembrandt and Sandro Botticelli. It appears they were using proteins in their oil paintings, specifically proteins from egg yolk. Scientists have been detecting proteins in oil paintings for decades, but it's always been blamed on contamination. But now, according to a study that was just recently published in Nature Communications, we know that the protein was intentional. Masters of European artwork in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries all used secret ingredients in their paints. Ophelia Ranket from the Institute of Mechanical Process Engineering and Mechanics says a small amount of egg yolk is able to change properties in oil paint. What's really crazy is that Leonardo da Vinci figured this out centuries ago, yet it took a whole team of scientists from an engineering school and all the latest tech to do the same thing. The truth is that Leonardo da Vinci and other old masters likely figured out the egg yolk trick by accident. When oil paint appeared in Europe in the Middle Ages, there was a lot of experimenting taking place. It's highly likely that masters of the art copied what the ancient Egyptians did with tempera during their experiments. The Egyptians used to combine egg yolk and powdered pigments with water to create intense colors, and they called this formula tempera. When da Vinci tried to do the same thing with oil, he created a much sturdier paint. But somehow, scientists missed this detail for centuries. Thanks for watching! What was your favorite ancient mystery? What would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to hit that subscribe button and come back soon! Bye!